I'd like to welcome y'all to another episode of Porter TV. Today, the location we at is at Brooks Bar and Grill on Monroe Street. I'd like to say shout out to Charlie and Homegirl Sierra for having us today. We got the future world champ, the number 14th ranked by the WBF, Tyler, the Golden Child McQuarrie coming through. We're going to talk about the Rock Nation situation to his brother E. Bunny and all kind of things. You might even hear about the next fight. You don't know, man. So stay tuned. Let's go. Like I said at the top of the show, we got the future world champ in the building, Tyler McQuarrie, the Golden Child. I'd like to welcome you to Porter TV, brother. How you doing, man? So let's get straight into it. Um, how it feel when you got that, that 14th ranking by the WBA? Man, it was just another boost of motivation. You feel me? It felt good, to be honest. Finally, the, the hard work and everything's being recognized. Okay, so, like, how do they go by? How do you, how do they go by the ranking in boxing? I know how I go in college basketball, college football. How like how do y'all get ranked? You ranked in the world, just not the United States, the world. Right, right. I mean, it, it's, it's all about taking the right fights. You know what I'm saying? Being the right fighters and, and people recognizing your talent. And so, um, your trainer, um, Lamar, mm -hmm. Lamar, he your trainer, right? Yes. How did y'all meet? Like, how did y'all link up? Man. It's that's my dude, man. Yeah, yeah. That's just, my dude. I met him. I met him a couple years back. We were in the titty bar. We, he was working at titty bars. And he was a boxer. Let me keep it real. I didn't know he could work with my ass or nothing like that. Cause I was like, man, this thing always avoiding something. When I seen him train you and Sonny, I'm like, God damn, that motherfucker got him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, <coughs> no, no, I, I, I met him as a, as a shorty for real. I was young. I was always, you know what I'm saying, young boy running around. But uh, I just went to the gym one day and he, he trained on the east side. The Eastside Boxing Gym. What's the name of the gym? Eastside Boxing Gym. Yeah, so I went over there and uh, sparred and everything. And he just took over. He just took me under his wing. You know and it's like, I just remember, man, when you was a kid, growing a lot of kid, but like a young man growing up, yeah. man, you think it was a lot. And it's oh, a lot, yeah. like a lot. Like your struggle, like <laughs> the cases and the, the little mishaps and stuff like that. How did you feel that first time? Cause you've been in the jail before, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, a gun case, right? Yeah. Okay. How like how, like when that happened? Like what was going through your head when you were sitting in that cell? Uh, I was well, I was fresh eighteen. Yeah, that was my first ever time being in jail. You know what I'm saying? I did like five six months you know, in the county jail fighting that gun case. And uh, I mean, I didn't think it was over or anything. You know, I always said when I get back home, I'm just gonna focus straight on boxing and, and, and run it up, but. While I was in there, all, I mean, I was just in there. You know how it be when you when you in jail, you mad at the world. You just thinking away when you get out, what you gonna do to motherfuckers and stuff like that. But uh, that was just all, just 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 an eye opening situation, and it showed me who my real friends was and and, and what I really meant to people. Man, we was eighteen. I was fresh eighteen. Let me tell you this, man. I went to the county when I was twenty two. I stayed about four or five days, and I swear it felt like a year, man. So I commend you, man. I don't know how you came about that, man. So, you know. But, um, how old was you, like, when your first knockout, like, how old were you? Uh, I ain't talking about the streets, I'm talking yeah, about yeah, the that, ring. No, no, no. Uh, I fought in the James Tony tournament in Detroit. Yeah, I think I was 17 or 16, and I fought some dude from Detroit. I liked him out like the first round. That's when I really like that. That was my first time playing somebody out. I was like, damn, I can really, I can really punch him and, 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 and do this for real. I'm 16 years old. 16, that's the, that's the early age. You know, when you're right? amateur, you got head gears on, um, big gloves. Knocked him out as an amateur. I'm pretty sure that guy's somewhere over in McDonald's right now. He <laughs> nah. knocked out, so now I'm just talking shit. Hey, whoever he knocked out at 16, don't come for me, please. So. I don't want to do that too. But um, your relationship with the other boxers, um, you also grew up with Albert Bell, um, Byron Odom, he used to box too, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and also um, Robert Easter Jr., you came up with them. Explain your relationship. Oh, man. We, we, we came up since the day. Yeah, right. We was in the amateurs all together, you know what I'm saying? In the streets all together. We, we just so happened, you feel me? Our, our focus, me and Robert, our focus is on the same thing right now. We both want the same out of, out of, out of the sport, you know what I'm saying? And 
Albert as well, you feel me? He wanted to be a world champion just like everybody can do. But um, and by that's my brother, that's my blood, you know what I'm saying? Right or wrong, anything, we always like this. Yeah, that's what I feel like, and that's what I commend y'all all on, the whole DT crew yeah. and Golden Child um, staff. It's how y'all, like y'all, a cohesive unit. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? If I said that right. It's how y'all are a unit, and it's just like, it's no one above, because you look at a lot of people, even locally here, yeah. the, 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 the chief gonna be a chief and treat all everybody like workers, but with y'all, it just seemed like, like when we went out last night, we just like all bosses. Yeah, man. And y'all treat each other. That's that's crazy. That's, like it's a good example too. That's that's how we run, man. I mean, <coughs> my brother's T D T, funny, Deucin, big that's big bro. He keep us like he keep us like you know what I'm saying. Calm and he makes sure everything's straight. With us. He seemed like the wild one. We ain't gonna talk about that one. Yeah. He seemed like the wild one. That's another interview. Um, the Rock Nation situation. Ponder on that. How, how did that? How did how did they find you and Sonny? That that was yeah, dope. When I seen that Jay Z picture. I was like, yeah. To be honest, he gonna he see did. him one day. Did that motivate you? Did oh, that? Yeah, 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 yeah. People. Now, how is he? Like, was he just? Was he just like a pig? Like, oh, I'm taking a picture of this old yeah, boy. Nah. Did he talk to you? Did he nah. a little bit of game? Like, the story is kind of crazy though. You feel me? Because they the, the the people from Rock Nation didn't come down. You know what I'm saying? To see me work out, to see me at all. They came down for Sonny Crazy. And, and I, well, I was two and at the time. He was already established like seven and over or something like that. I don't think he fly or something. Um, so I'm in the bar doing my thing, and the guy just watched me. He looking at me like, who is right here? My coach was like, oh, that's Tony Curry. He's 126 pounds, two and over, two knockouts, and he did this and that. And he's like, okay, we ain't leaving without him right here. We need him too, because he going to be something. I was like, damn, we went out to eat, you know what I'm saying? About three, four months later, they shot me a contract. My management looked over and everything and took care of it. But the, the situation, how me and Jay took that picture was kind of crazy. Yeah, you know, he, uh, we was, was all taking a picture with God. Yeah, we was all in uh, Vegas. And, uh, I'm saying, we in the suite. There's everybody there. We got Beyonce here, Kelly Rowan here. I'm talking about everybody. Oh, she's a beautiful person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm talking about Kelly, and we ain't gonna talk yeah, about. We know a beaver, man. Hey, what you see is what you get. You feel me? Oh yeah. But we was we was all in the street. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Another fighter had asked Jay for a picture. Like, can we get pictures? And he told him like some some cool shit. Like, you know, I'm trying to feel normal right now. We all back in the suite. We, we all around each other. We in the same atmosphere. Like, just let me feel normal right now for a little bit. And, um, he brushed the nigga off. Yeah, no, not like that though. But he, he kept it real. You feel me? Because he like when I go out said out here in these lights, a million people want to pay you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's I oh, get you one a little bit later. And he did. You feel me? Mm -hmm. But he he looked at me while I was saying it. I, I I'm the type of person to be honest. Like I ain't going I don't get starstruck. I'm not gonna ask you for a pick because I mean it might sound big headed or cocky, but I feel like what I'm trying to do in my life and where I'm trying to go, they gonna recognize me later on. You feel me? Yeah. They wanna take pictures with me, but um. While he while we was walking out, he just grabbed me by the arm, me by the shoulder, and was like, "Come on, let's take a pic. Let's take this pic." And then, and then from there, they introduced us, and he was like, "Oh, I heard about you. Yeah, yeah, yeah." Was, yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, he he wrote down the earth through. Breaking news on Porter TV, man. Breaking news. Like that's the first. That's probably the biggest breaking news that I've had in the last three episodes. So, Jay Z, um. Andre Ward, how did it feel? You fought, you fought on the undercard for Andre Ward, and like, what were you mistaken? I think I seen that's one of your favorite fighters. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, that definitely went on the top five. He's top five for sure. But uh, I gained a relationship with Dre throughout, you know what I'm saying, Rock Nation, and just chopping it up through social media. And he called my phone, I called his phone whenever I need advice, you know what I'm saying? Like, he, he really like a, a role model and a mentor and really like that type of dude that's into the Bible and to religious stuff man. Damn, that's crazy. Yeah, he's he, he a good dude. Real good dude. So, um, with that, do y'all ever, cause I, I, you know, barbershop talk, every, a lot, a lot of people around the way talk, like, do y'all ever feel you, Sonny, a lot of y'all fighters that's coming up, even with the basketball players, how do you handle that pressure when people tell y'all y'all need to leave the city and, and, and 
move and get away because it's troubles, it's problems. Because we know what type of city we, we, right. we grew up here. So I know how I feel, but they might not know how to feel explain. Yeah, some, sometimes, it, you know what I'm saying, it's not pressure from, from the people or anything to get away, but sometimes you know what I'm saying, we do feel like we do need to get away to get a clear mind, you know what I'm saying, and see it with the, the vision, with a clear eye view, and stay focused. But at the end of the day, it's my city, and, and, and I love my city, you know what I'm saying. I, I get away, but you know, I'm always going to come back. I'm always going to be here. But... When the time right, you know what I'm saying, financially and, and, and everything else, we will really get out of there. When I can take my trainers, my brother, you know what I'm saying, family that. You gotta take the Marfa. He yeah, gotta go with that Marfa. He been down to the camera. Oh yeah, he we, we together to the end. You know what I'm saying, just to the end. Um, cover that aspect. <laughs> I want to know that February 10th, yeah. Huntington Center. Yeah. That is just. Year, just coming out that tunnel. You seeing Big Bro come out. You seeing Albert. The, nigga, the, the people you grew up with just coming out. Like, how did you feel? And, and what's so crazy, you end up having to fight after the main event. Yeah, yeah. And this is what started struggling me. Everybody stayed. Yeah. Even if it was just for a quick glue, when yeah. you drop dude, I heard a whole, it was just like crazy. Like yeah. that, that. All my people stayed. All my, all my real supporters stayed. Some people didn't know, you feel me, that, that, um, it was a I had a, a workout about which means it was the dead last bout after the main event. It's usually no fight after the main event unless it's like a swing bout or a workout bout. But like I said, some people didn't know, so some did leave. But everybody that knows me and my real supporters that stay, but it felt great, man, to be on the undercard of my brother. You know what I'm saying? A world title fight, making history. That was that was a wonderful feeling. That was that was something that we dreamed of. To be honest, to bring a world title back to Toledo. And to see that he brought one back is just like you get yours real soon. Yeah, we we definitely we, we gonna bring another one back. You get yours real, real, real yeah, soon. We gonna bring another one back. And it was like, man, it was just, just seeing that. I can't lie when y'all came out. Like I'm like a little kid. I'm sitting there looking like, man, that's just like, it's just like a blessing. Do sometimes it just feel like a dream, real? Then I wake up every day and just sometimes I be like, man, like. It's, it's, it's a blessing, like, just to wake up and your dreams, like, right in your face and living your dream, to be honest. But it's still more to go, you know what I'm saying? When I think about me living my dream, I already feel like I got way more to do. This ain't half of where I want to be at. You know what I'm saying? I'm thinking about Floyd, his lifestyle. That's what oh, I'm thinking man, about. I just watch Floyd. I watch Floyd. Let me tell you something about Floyd. I watch his Instagram live videos. Every time the notification pop up, it's like, just to be like that. But at the end of the day, you know what I'm saying? It ain't even a lifestyle that I want. You feel me? I just want to live comfortable and make a better way for my kids if I have some, my family, my mama. You know what I'm saying? That's the only you thing. You walk I into a wall. I'm hoping you say that about the kids. Mm -hmm. We're going to put it out here. Are you single? Because they want to know. Oh, yeah, my dad. So no kids. Okay. No mistress. Nah. You ain't got no white girls popping up with nah. the nah. nah, 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 nah. nah. Man, so like. You know, I told you we have no holes born on Porter TV. And, and, and we do this. This this is the first time we're going to do it because it's something I want to implement into the interview. Tell me a story. Y'all was out on the road, or maybe here, the craziest, and I don't want to disrespect them, the craziest groupie story. Tell them, you got one? No, we can't talk about oh, that. I can't right talk about that. You can't talk about that. Right We're going to have a new TV show called the, the, the <laughs> Freaky Tales. We, know, that's, yeah, that, we, know, we can do that, but we can't um, do that right here. But like, you're related, do you, I know Bunny, do you have a relationship with Adrian Brown? Yeah, yeah, that's big bro. Like, I, I got on the phone with him today. You know what I'm saying? We, we gained our relationship through Bunny, you feel me? Yeah. Because he said, you know what I'm saying, the way he looked at Bunny, he looking at Bunny, and that's how he looking at me. I guess a little brother, but A B like one solid humble dude to be honest. Like everybody see him and he all flashy flamboyant and I tell a lot of people that that's so humble. The man do so much for the city of Cincinnati, not even Cincinnati but for boxing and for me. Sam I'm telling you, you wanna believe like the things you do. I tell everybody I think you can't go off a person passionate because he's still y'all all are young. He is young with a lot of money. And a lot of promise to his future, and I think a lot of people take the misconception. I don't think they, I think when America learned the story about Ty, they learned the story about it's a tree because a lot of people wouldn't put, like I said, a lot of chiefs don't put 
bosses, like y'all running like all bosses, like yeah. we was in PA, everybody running like a boss, and we was um, down here, it was like everybody was like a boss, like no one is above the crew, man. No, nah, we, we make sure we like are, a legal BMS. Yeah, we all treat each other as one, you feel me? Like, whenever I'm going through something, call my brothers, and whenever they going through something, they call me, or we need something, we conscious to each other, we broke, I'm up, let's do it, you, you and me. So when, when, um, when is your next fight? We working on it now, man. We trying to either get get going in late May or early June. Uh, we, we, we had some um, some things being worked out, some real big okay. plans being worked out that I can't really talk about because it's kind of sad. But late May or June, we'll be right back. Like since you've been boxing, you've been up signing the Rock Nation. Shoshay with the champ. Like, who is, like, your favorite boxer that you met, like, old school throwback, like, that you met, you were just like, damn, I really seen here talking. I seen you talking to Linus Lewis in yeah. one interview. So how how was that? Uh, the, I mean, the, the, the little conversation with Linus was dope. It was in Vegas, and uh, he was just basically spending a lot of game telling us, like, what to do with the money, how to save our money, and what to watch out for with, you know what I'm saying, just a lot of things inside boxing and behind the scenes but one of my favorite old school boxers i have to say pernell whitaker you know uh, i'm i'm into roy jones all that type of stuff. i just watched a roy jones video where this dude was sticking out his tongue flashing back boom hitting back he was cold yeah, yeah, yeah that was one of the greatest for real God damn, man, these niggas, man. <laughs> but, um, Lennox Lewis, um, he beat Mike Tyson ass. That was like one of the biggest, and that's how I know y'all were headed for the stardom. Nigga, man, back in the day, and y'all probably, I don't know if y'all, you know, I'm kind of older. I am older. Um, they used to throw fight parties. Uh, like aunties, uncles, mom, dudes, dad, yeah. they used to throw fight I seen him throwing a fight. It was so many fight parties, and that's how you, I just thought to in myself. Toledo? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So at the house, I'm talking about. They was taking him back to the house where I yeah. like, like, y'all just be, you don't just get overwhelmed. That's 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 one thing I love about the city, to be honest. Like when when, when they show support, they show support. They they show love for sure, and they know how to really like put all the BS to the side. You know what I'm saying? And, and really come together like as one. That's what I love about Toledo. Before we end every segment of Porta TV, I always give three words and you give me an answer, no matter how long or what it is. Um, the first one would be the gold child. That's me. Um, Robert Easter Jr. Blood, my brother. The next one is Toledo. Uh, the mud, I love Toledo. There yeah, y'all got it, man. The Golden Child, Tyler McQuarrie. Y'all got it. Put the TV out. Movie mail behind the corner. Let's go. I said behind the corner. Yeah, that too. They didn't want to see me with it, so I had to go and get it.